There's no video game franchise on the planet quite like Grand Theft Auto. For proof of that, consider the fact that GTA 5 has been out for close to five years and still remains a constant fixture in the disc trays of consoles worldwide. That's incredible. In an era when games have a more limited shelf life than ever, the world moves fast and so does the gaming industry, people are still whizzing around San Andreas causing chaos with Michael, Franklin and Trevor. All of this hasn't stopped everyone from playing Detective when it comes to the next instalment either. In fact, it encourages rumours and speculation, not to mention YouTubers The Know claiming to have the latest scoop on Rockstar's next slice of criminal action thanks to a loose-lipped inside source. GTA 6 is certainly a ways off, but with its construction coming with millions of dollars of potential in tow, I'm Scott from whatculture.com and this is GTA 6, 9 best leaks and rumours we want to come true. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 9, The Return to Vice City. One of the biggest pieces of news from the Nose report was that Rockstar are ready to make a grand return to perhaps the most beloved city in GTA history. No, it's not Liberty and no, it's not even San Andreas. It's the pastel suit and Hawaiian shirt covered streets of sunny Vice City. There are no details yet as to which time period GTA 6 will take place in, so don't get too excited about running around the mid 80s listening to Judas Priest and Cutting Crew just yet. There's a slight chance that Rockstar will remodel the environment to focus on the modern day instead of producing another love letter to fans of Scarface. Still. Will Tommy Vercetti be back to build up another criminal empire? Have Rockstar demolished iconic locations like the mansion on Starfish Island or the Malibu Club to make room for new buildings? Only time will tell. Number 8. Real Life Miami VG247 claim there's a chance that Rockstar will forgo expanding Vice City as seen on PS2 and look to model GTA 6's map on a real-life version of Miami instead. Vice City was a scaled-down version of the Floridian port city anyway, and it would make sense to plunder parts of the place for use in GTA 6 to give it a more authentic feel. Maybe this means that the fictional parts of Vice City will give way to landmarks like the Freedom Tower, American Airlines Arena, Miami City Halls, and Miami Beach. It'd be upsetting to see Vespucci Beach fall by the wayside, but it would also be pretty foolish to fake apathy towards Towards any injection of realism. Rockstar can still call the place Vice City too, I mean that doesn't really have to change. Being able to use the Miami Metro Rail as a fast travel system is also pretty enticing. The original Vice City's map wasn't big enough to justify fast travel, so depending on the size of GTA 6's layout, catching the train and using it to traverse from city to city is a sweet idea. Number 7. A shared Rockstar world of characters Okay, fine, this is a bit of a long shot in some respects, but the seeds have been sown for years as to a shared Rockstar universe. We know that the GTA games are linked thanks to GTA 3's Claude turning up in San Andreas, but what's even cooler was John Marsden popping up in GTA 5, both in GTA Online's character selection screen and on an advert for Pissfassa beer. Add to this the leaked map for Red Dead Redemption 2, which directly references Mafia 3's New Bordeaux, the fictional version of New Orleans. Of course, Mafia 3 was made by Hangar 13, but it proves that Rockstar are more than up for connecting some of their locations to others, even from other games. Point being, in this age of shared movie universes and other properties continually crossing over, Rockstar have the ability to introduce older characters as residents of whichever city you're roaming around in. Whether they be mission givers or neat little easter eggs, it'd be really cool to see them. Why not bring back fan favourites as side characters and continue forward with one huge overarching story instead of wiping the slate clean every few years? Number 6. Players will travel outside the United States Though there's no concrete details on which countries this includes, it's interesting that Rockstar are internally calling GTA 6 Project Americas. Note the plural there and start jumping up and down with glee at the prospect of grabbing a flight outside Florida to visit nations such as Brazil, Argentina, Peru and Uruguay. Colombia is another location that would make sense. The Colombian cartel played a major role in games like GTA 3 and Liberty City Stories, so they've already played a part in that game's universe. Not only that, but Vice City fanatics will remember gun-toting angry man Ricardo Diaz also entering Vice City from Colombia. With all of this in mind, drug runs could end up being the most high-profile side missions in GTA 6. Bring that on. Number 5. A release date of 2022 Apparently, GTA 6 will be shipping within the next three to four years, and there's already a tentative release date of 2022. This would extend GTA 5's life cycle to around nine years, and of course, Red Dead Redemption 2 was set for release later this year, which admittedly would keep the gaming world talking until then. Still, when it comes to the studio's major franchises, Rockstar seemed to like to take their time. There were only two years between the original Vice City and the release of San Andreas, a further four years between that game and GTA 4, and around five between that and GTA 5. When put like that, and realizing that Rockstar want to make GTA 6 the best thing they've ever made, maybe the wait isn't so bad. Number 4. Set in London 
Whilst I'd personally love a Newcastle-themed GTA, big up the Geordie Massive, the most likely candidate comes from London. And why? Because until GTA 5 went back to San Andreas, there was a subtle pattern emerging in terms of Rockstar's release process. See, in the original GTA, we had Liberty City, Vice City, and San Andreas, albeit in 2D. Then the leap to 3D on the PS2, and again, those three places saw demonstrable upgrades. However, there was another 2D location left behind from a single spin-off. London. GTA London 1961 and 1969 remain the only older games to exist outside the established locations that are yet to be upgraded to modern hardware. Hell, they've not even been made into 3D. As GTA 4 saw Rockstar rebuild Liberty City yet again and GTA 5 tackled San Andreas, we are long overdue a revisit to the big smoke. Number 3. Multiple playable characters and warping return. Being able to switch instantly between Michael, Franklin, and Trevor was one of GTA 5's biggest selling points. It was seamless, kept the action rolling, and Rockstar even found time to insert funny little cutscenes showing the characters in various situations that suited their stories and individual personalities. Now, although at the time of this video it's unconfirmed, it looks like Rockstar are carrying this idea into Red Dead Redemption 2, as multiple trailers have shown Dutch's gang riding as all seven characters together. Now that might be a bit too many to build a cohesive story around, but if Rockstar make multiple characters a staple of their games just like mini-maps and open worlds, it makes sense to expand this even further into GTA 6. Number 2. A Female Protagonist Up until now, female characters in Grand Theft Auto's universes have been either used for comedic relief, Catalina, Mallory Bardis Bellet, or as eye candy, Mercedes Cortez, Candy Sucks, and the various girlfriends available throughout the series, but that's set to change with GTA 6. For the first time ever, Rockstar seemed prepared to develop a serious female protagonist who doesn't rely on bitchy behavior or sex appeal to become an important part of the story. That'll become even more true if GTA 6 ends up featuring a solo protagonist. The childish scripting of females in the past makes it difficult to see Rockstar sticking to a newfound moral code that casts a female as inspiring, but hey, I mean, I never expected to be fighting waves of aliens in GTA 5, so who knows? Number 1. Play as cops and criminals Considering the incredible potential of being able to hop across the map and embody different characters at any point in their daily routines, Rockstar need to expand this to cover way more thematic potential. Point being, rumors have discussed playing as a cop before, but swapping between a police officer and a criminal on the fly would change gameplay considerably. I mean, just think of something that's rooted in the idea of Point Break or the first Fast and the Furious. GTA's signature chases would be way more tactile if you had to maintain your cover as a cop, switching to the criminal for the sake of attempting a getaway, then occasionally flicking back to divert attention or lead the chase in the wrong direction. Incarceration would no longer be the end as you could infiltrate any police station and spring your other character from lockup before escorting them back to freedom. This kind of dynamic between protagonists put the movies that I mentioned on the map, and combining it with GTA 5's character switching mechanic would be the way to go. Gosh, can you believe that that person said that about that particular video on that entry? I sure can't. Huh, but you should like, share, and subscribe below anyway. And also, the people who made this video, they're right here. Go follow them and give them some love. Also, there's more content probably above my head. Check it out. Or don't. 50-50.